Hey everybody, we're with Joe Costa. Uh, he is with Karate International, right? In Correct. Wyndham, New Hampshire. And he has a question for us, sir. Uh, yeah, my question is, um, in the last seminar you were talking about rotating curriculum. Yes, sir. And um, I'm kind of interested in a rotating curriculum, but one of the big concerns I have is we teach forms. And mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you guys do the same type of thing of forms. And one of the schools that I know does a cr rotating curriculum in, one of the things they do is they teach half the form and they learn the other half another time. And some people learn the second half and then they don't learn the first half for right, right. however how long. So right. my question is, is, how do you deal with that? How do you okay. do a rotating curriculum? A lot curriculum? of that depends, <laughs> uh, uh, wow. A lot of that depends on the style you're teaching and the type of forms that you're teaching. I used to teach uh, uh, a more sport version of American Kempo. So we organized the forms to where the form didn't build upon the next form, right? So it wasn't like you're learning long one and then you learned it first and then you did uh, a short one. It would be a repetition. So we just put forms in that were different enough that it didn't look like a step backward as you're rotating through those forms. Now, but what you just said is how we do it most of the time. Depends, like if you're in a style and, and a student has to learn 15 forms from white belt to black belt, so they have to learn a form every belt rank, well then you can't really break up the forms. You have to design and put the forms in a certain order that white, yellow, orange belts are learning three forms that are uh, beginning level forms and then blue purple green belt are rotating through three other forms that are intermediate forms but if you have the flexibility you want to teach katas but you don't have to teach so many then for example take a kata just like you're talking about break it up into three uh, uh, sections or parts uh, or combos and then do it where it doesn't matter which order you learn those combos as long let's say blue purple green belt which would be my intermediate students they're going to learn one form in those nine months so they each learn a section of the form, doesn't matter what order, to, order they wrote, learn the form in, but when they get ready to go to the advanced class, they put the form in the, those combos in the right order, and then they test on the entire form, then they go into the next level, the advanced level class. So that way we have the advantages of rotating curriculum, and we've limited the amount of memorization, and we got the benefits of, of the exciting classes, and all the students are learning the same thing at the same time. Now, I don't know what type of karate martial arts you're teaching. Is Shotokan, Ishinru, uh, Japanese karate? Not sure. And I don't know what's expected. Like if your students have to test under a, a board and they have to know a certain form, then we got to go back and we got to look at, can we change the order they learn the forms in? Or does it matter what order? Now, if you're the owner, you test your own students, you got the freedom to do whatever, then it's easy to rotate it. Yeah. Would you do the whole form or would you more specialize on breaking it up? Well, you know, when, when, I, when I designed the curriculum for Premier Martial Arts, we only have three forms from white belt to black belt. And those three forms was a beginner form, which was called focus form, intermediate form was power form, advanced form uh, was intensity form. And just like I explained, they're broken down into form combos. Doesn't matter what order you learn those combos. They put the combos together to create the form. They test on the form but they go, before they go into the next level, which would be intermediate or advanced training. Gotcha. Yeah. A little bit harder for me, I think, because I have, like you said earlier, one form per belt. Right. And if you got 10 belts, that's 10 different forms. Well, that's a different conversation of why you feel it necessary for a student to learn that many forms. Uh, that's a totally different conversation. But if you now, if you have the flexibility, like, like I said, when I talk Kempo, there is long one and short one. And we didn't want, it doesn't make sense to do long one first and then learn short one. Because right. you're just to ease, learning backwards. something backwards. Yeah. So we just tried to put the forms and pick Kempo forms that weren't so much alike and didn't build upon the next one. Right. You know, so that gotcha. might be something to look at. But man, the benefits of rotating curriculum far out, out exceeds the pain that it's going to take to change your curriculum a little bit. Yeah. You know, so many benefits. Because a one-man show, one instructor can teach 50 right. students as easy as five. Right. If you've got good rotating curriculum and you can focus on the more important, exciting parts of class, you know. Yeah. I hope that helps. Thank you. All right, man. Thanks for stopping by. All right.
Hey everyone, I'm glad here on our show to have a friend of mine. I've known this gentleman for gotta be 20 years now, Danny Trujillo. His, what's the name of the city that you're in? <laughs> All I know is it's on the east side of Los Angeles. City of Laverne, city, city of Laverne. Okay, awesome. If you know where we, if you know where Bridge of Water is at, you found it. Okay, yeah. all right. I've been to your school several years ago and, and he's a chosen martial arts. If you ever get a chance, he has a beautiful training facility, amazing students. You gotta stop by and check out what this guy is doing. So what kind of questions do you have for our audience today? Well, you know what I like to talk about more social media, Facebook, okay. um, Instagram, whatever you just to, to feed us. You got any specific questions about um, Facebook? No, I mean, what do you, what are the, what are the three things that you recommend Facebook? Well, the thing about Facebook, you can do direct sales from Facebook, which means you can, especially for an event, you can promote event on Facebook and get people to register for the event. You can pr put an ad on Facebook and get people to click and go to a landing page and buy something immediately. But remember, Facebook is primarily designed to gather the leads that you're then gonna take that email and drop in a sales funnel and you're gonna make that sell over a period of time by continuing the conversation with someone. Mm. So that, I think sometimes owners think that, oh, I'm gonna make an immediate sell by putting this ad up, and then they don't, and they get frustrated and they stop. If you gathered the email from your Facebook uh, ad or from your marketing, that was the win, that was the victory. Yes. Then you gotta put it into an email funnel, which is a series of sales emails that is going to the right person. So if it's a mom looking for martial arts lessons for her kids, she's getting a series of timed emails that go out that's discussing the benefits of martial arts training for her. If it's an adult that's interested in self-defense or fitness, there's an appropriate sales funnel that's following. And in an average of about 90 days is when, mm. you know, that period, you're gonna make the yes. actual sell of your introductory course or your two lesson trial program or whatever. Now, don't hear what I'm not saying. You can make immediate sales, but don't forget about the email funneling that supports your Facebook marketing. Yeah, okay. That's probably the, the biggest tip. Yeah, yeah the follow-up that okay. uh, that people need to be doing and have that ability. And and so many, I think you said you use uh, 97 displays? Yes, sir. When we were yeah. talking earlier. So I'm sure they have that ability for that email to go from Facebook to go into their system and funnel those uh, sales emails to a client. Great, very good. So, so uh, you said three things. What else? High points on on Facebook marketing is you know knowing your demographic, uh, understanding that Facebook is is constantly evolving. Like a new thing now is it's all it's been important for you to go Facebook Live. This is getting more and more important because when you go Facebook Live. Anybody that's following your page, they get a notification. Yes. So they're getting these notifications and reminders that you exist whenever you go Facebook Live. So that alone is reason why you'd want to go Facebook Live in your school a few times. You know, my Matt Chat system, our Black Belt Excellence Character Development Program, I think that is a prime time to go live every single day in one of your classes, mm -hmm. is film your instructors teaching that Matt Chat. Or our Drill for Skill program, when you're doing that fun, high energy drill, Film that part of class. Don't film the part where you're teaching them forms or teaching a technique. Film the exciting parts of class and go go Facebook Live. Oh, okay. And of course, it's going to stay on your page for more posts uh, and become a post in the in the future for people to get engagement, likes, shares, and 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 clicks. Um, but now, for even Facebook Live, you could whoever watches your Facebook Live, you can go in and do a lookalike audience and market to a, a, a sharper demographic of people that all you know are interested because they've been watching your Facebook Live. Mm. So I guess the, the, the next thing about Facebook is it's ever evolving and changing and developing. Yes. You know? And you know, don't forget Instagram. Instagram especially for the younger aged, you know, the twenty year olds, twenty somethings, is very important to be marketing on Instagram to these people. Luckily you can do that right on your Facebook account yeah. and add and go straight into the, the Instagram. But make sure that, that, that you are doing that as well. So those are just three quick tips or things I think maybe people miss yeah. when they're dealing with Facebook. You know? Great. Awesome. I love it, I love it sir. Thanks Thank for you being very on much. the show, man. I'll All talk right. to you soon. You guys take care. All right, guys, on the next question, I'm excited to have a friend of mine. I've known this guy for 15 years, Larry Zahand of Zahand's Martial Arts in Akron, Ohio. 
What's going on, sir? Hey, how are you? Good to good, see you. Good Having to see a good time too. at the show? Yeah, I really appreciate that cup of coffee you bought me earlier. I know. I did buy you a cup of coffee yeah. this morning, just out of the blue. It's the kind of guy I am. Yeah, I understand. You bought me a dinner a long time ago. I did. So I paid, you remember paid that, back. huh? Yeah, you remember absolutely. that. Absolutely. Okay. Hey, you don't forget when somebody buys you food. <laughs> absolutely. You know? So, or a couple, no, he, you did buy me food too. We split it. And we split a dessert. Yeah, it was really good. So, yeah. yeah. Awesome. That's good. That's good. Okay, so, we, what, what kind of question you got for me today? Well, I guess uh, the first question I might have is, what is the best marketing tool right now to use in the martial arts? Wow, the best. You know, we do uh, what's called the nine of nine. Nine martial arts action, nine marketing actions that give us 90% of our results and we spend 90% of our time on. So saying there's one, I can tell you what we do, but I, I just did an interview with John Burchard, a friend of mine that owns 12 schools, and he said his number one marketing action was his referral programs, where another guy will tell you, nah, referral programs don't work for me. We do a lot of Facebook advertising right now, digital marketing, email, mar email sales funneling, and things like that. But man, we're still out there doing school talks and, and promotional booths and martial arts birthday parties. I would say if I had to narrow it down to one right now, digital marketing, Facebook and marketing and our website and our email marketing is our, is our number one. Now, that is tech heavy and uh, uh, labor intensive on the, the, the ad admin side. You gotta know what you're doing. Um, so I would say, from the experience of Premier Martial Arts Schools, man, Mass Intros has been our bread and butter for years. We had a school owner and we were talking about being in Germany uh, at lunch when me and you were hanging out this morning. Uh, we have a school owner in uh, Leeds, England. He set a goal to sign up, a add, not just sign up, add 100 students to his student body in 90 days. He started in January, 68 days later, he signed up 100 people majority of them overwhelmingly came from Mass Intro Systems. And I know you came to Knoxville, how many years ago was that? It had to be 12 years ago. 12 years ago, yeah, and we you were doing- You did the Mass Intro stuff. Yeah. I've been doing it ever You've been since. Doing, ever you and your since, son have ever great since, results for Saturday it. morning, 10 a.m., Mass Intro. If we need to do it at two in the afternoon, we do it at two. But 10 a.m., we try to get at least four or five people a week. And, uh, you know, we'll get 50 to 75% signed up yep well four or five new students every Saturday morning as your 1520 for the month yeah so yeah I would say mass intros are such a, a, a powerful thing and now we're moving into really for years they were so good for the kids market now we're getting great results with adult market so we're doing mass intros not every Saturday for adult market but we're doing a lot of B2B where we're networking with companies and businesses and getting their staff to do self-defense workshops and open houses. So it's kind of a twist on it, but it's doing really good. Now, I've never done a mass intro with adults. What do you do there? Well, I mean, same how thing. Much you know, we, is it? Remember, when, with mass intros, the best way is if you get an opportunity to see a group of people, kids or adults, one time and you invite them back to your school for the second part of that. You invite them back to, what well, industry, we say mass intro, but for them would be invite them back to receive a free uniform, earn their first belt, break a real board in front of mom and dad, sure. and so forth. For the adult market, we're doing really, at my women's self-defense program, which I'll be coming out with for the general public here in the next uh, few weeks. Women's self-defense workshops, and then, like I said, B2B. You know, B2B, I can go into a comp. We did this with Wal our local Walgreens, uh, their, their corporate headquarters in, in Knoxville, mm -hmm. where we went in, we had one conversation with one person, which is their human resource, and we set up a self-defense workshop for, they gotta have 15 stores in Knoxville for all their employees. Mm -hmm. With one conversation, we made that happen. Of course, they all come for a self-defense workshop and then we make them a special, not just a today only offer, but in those instances, it's a corporate membership. You get a corporate savings for Walgreens special if you sign up today on a six months trial program or so forth. So same thing, you know, uh, whether it's a, a corporation or a, a restaurant, you know, there's a, a Cheddar's is this restaurant chain in the South and they have a uh, store, a uh, restaurant right across the street. 220 people work there. And one of my guys walked in, talked to the manager, boom, all of a sudden we were doing a self-defense clinic and workshop for all the employees of just that one restaurant. Now, 228 people, we only had like 
12 show up, but we still signed up three or four of them in our adult Krav Maga program. Sure. So it's loud in here, huh? Yeah, it is. Yeah. They need to be quiet. Don't they understand we're doing an interview? Well, no, this is, should be about me and you. <laughs> it is. Not what all is these it? people at the, at the Super Show. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand. I guess we should give it a second before yeah. they stop. Yeah. Can you still hear us over there? Okay. So we'll have it. All right, so I'm, I'm just going to close it up, okay? So, man, that was great. Thank you so much, hey, man. Fair, it's good to see you best, every man. year. Every year. Every year. Hopefully next year at the Bellagio, right? You should come to Knoxville to I my am. big symposium October 5th, 6th, and 7th. 5th, 6th, and 7th of what month? This October. This October. First weekend in October, I do a big symposium for all the, the premier martial arts studios, but we invite the general public. So we'll have instructor college, we'll do program directors college, we have Krav Maga training, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu training, and business workshops all under one, one roof under my, in my national training center. So do we I invite get, you and your, your do, family. Do I get a 15 year discount? It's free for you. <laughs> oh, I got that free. on video now. It's but, free for you. <laughs> I'm coming for okay. sure. All right, all right man, thank you so hey, much. Thanks a lot. All right. All right, you take care.